So last week I made a video complaining about stats in maths A level, and uh, and anyone can complain about something, can't they? Like that doesn't that's not aggressive. Um, what we need as a community is we need to fix things that are problematic. So this video is me fixing A level stats and and creating something that I think is is much better. I've had the help of a couple of other people, um, so um, thank you to those people for for helping. Um, but yeah, firstly, let's set out our curriculum aims before we actually go through the curriculum itself. So the first aim and the most important one is to prepare students for the stats and probability courses in you know first year of university if they're taking um, maths at university. Now, the key thing to understand here is in the current system, most people who do maths at university do maths and further maths at A level. However, for most of those people, their further maths doesn't contain any stats. And so the only stats knowledge they have going into their university course is the stats that's found in A level, which, as we discussed last week, is problematic because it's terrible. Now, some people do do some further stats, but it's not everyone. And so the conclusion we have to draw from this is that the stats that's in regular A level maths has to be quite good. It has to be good enough to get through the majority of people who don't do any more stats above that. Um, so that's the first thing that we'll say. The second thing is that um, it has to be good enough to not make kids hate stats before they even get to university. Um, the, the majority of people I feel who start university maths degrees are of the mind, and I, and I know I was certainly one of them, are of the mind of, okay, I'll, I'll just do the mandated stats course in first year, and then I'll never have to do stats again because you, they already hate it by the end of A-level because the curriculum is so terrible and so boring and so pointless compared to all the other stuff. Um, so we're going to try and avoid that. So we're going to make some put some interesting enough stuff in it to avoid that. And thirdly, we'll try and support students in other STEM subjects, which is a aim that's set out in A-level maths. Um, because, of course, the majority of people who do A-level maths go on to do not maths at university, but other subjects. So that'll be our, our third thing to, to try and go for. Very, very impressively, of course, incredibly impressively, the current stats curriculum achieves zero for three here, it goes zero for three, which is just an outstanding level of incompetence, especially since like some of these aims are like fighting against each other, um, like you know, preparing you for, for university and making it enjoyable are kind of in some way competing things. And so to simply go zero for three and not even achieve one of them is, uh, is, is, is just incredible stuff. Anyway, hopefully uh, this curriculum that we'll set out does a little bit of a better job, but we'll find out. Year one. So what's going to be in year one? Uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll do averages, summary statistics, and standard deviation. So we'll just get all of that out of the way. Um, we'll just learn all the formulas. Uh, the formulas, of course, will be in the formula book. I don't really care about making people memorize stuff. It doesn't matter. Um, as long as we just know what to do, know how to get each one. Uh, and that's just the first chapter. should be nice and straightforward. The second chapter, it will use all of that stuff. Uh, to do proper PMCC, product moment correlation coefficient, worked out from scratch using, of course, these things here. Uh, we'll do least squared regression line, of course, using this result here. And we'll also do Spearman's rank. Um, Spearman's rank looks like this for those of you who haven't seen it, because, of course, all of this is currently in further stats. So for people who haven't seen Spearman's rank, this is the formula. It's not too complicated, uh, but I can see, for example, if you're a psychology teacher teaching A level, and you would never, you know, maybe you haven't even done maths A level, I can see why this would be something that you'd want. Um, a level maths to support you with and to to, to help and to teach for you um, rather than maybe the pros and cons of different sampling methods which is currently what we um, help them out with i i think they probably want more support with this it's also been pointed out of course that spearman rank is in core maths the a level core maths thing it's also in gcse statistics and i sort of feel like a level maths uh, a level statistics but a level statistics in a level maths should include the things in GCSE statistics and in core maths. Like, it makes no sense to me that you're doing Spearman Drag in the other two things, but not not here. Um, that makes no sense to me. Anyway, like I said, the formula books should have all of this information in it still. And all this chapter is, is just learning how to use these different things. You don't have to memorize them. We'll just do them and we'll move on. The third chapter is binomial. It's it's similar to the current spec. You just learn about the distribution. And, uh, and yeah, that's absolutely fine. I don't have any problems with that. I think that should be introduced early. Uh, then we'll do normal. Uh, this is very similar to the current year two spec. Got no real problems with it. It's quite a long chapter, but it is very important. And I think it should be included quite early. And then the last chapter is hypothesis testing, except now that we've actually done some useful stats, we can hypothesis test one, two, three, four different things. 
which will make this chapter not just doing like like the original chapter that currently exists is just you just do a hypothesis test on binomials because that's the only thing you can do it's really boring because it's just the same thing every time but now we can hypothesis test a few different things and uh, know you know what what each one looks like and when to choose one and not the other and so on so yeah i think this is so this is just year one this is the whole thing um, i think it's fairly good it's it, it i people like me would find it quite boring still um but i do think at least it's all worthwhile and and all helpful and so yeah that, that's that year two um, is of a slightly different flavor i've it's only three chapters i've gone for conditional probability first very similar to the second um thing that you do in in regular uh, sorry in, in current year 13 or year two spec just all the venn diagram stuff and, and things like that i think that's really important i think the chapter could use some improvements and could use some work but on the whole i, I think it's okay um so we'll we'll keep we'll keep it on the whole uh, next we'll do discrete random variables this is something taken from further stats you look at things like this where something can take a set of specific values with certain probabilities and you can work out the expected value of this if you do it and you can work out the variance of it and so on it's not a, it's not it's not going to be a very long topic um you can also like do transformations on it and stuff like that but it's still, it's still not going to be a very long topic because what this is really in here for is to support us with our last topic in year two um, which is the big one and it's going to be the, the the best thing in new a level stats uh, which is continuous random variables so a continuous random variable doesn't work like this, where it can take a selection of unique values. It can take any value between a start and end point, uh, which actually ends up being like a graph, right? So it can take any value between 0 and 50 with, with varying different probabilities, just as an example. And now, of course, the reason this is so great is because now that we have a graph, we can do some nice pure maths with it. Like if we integrate the continuous uh, function here between the start point and the end point, we must get 1 because probability adds to one, which means, of course, that if you're given a, 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 a slightly ill-defined function, you can then use this fact to, to solve for the function. You can find some that missing constant in it or something like that. You can also, of course, say what the probability of getting something, in this case, maybe less than 30 is by just integrating up to 30 and finding the amount of area beneath it. You can also, um, of course, uh, for example, uh, the median is is the, the piece of data with 50% below it, 50% above it. So therefore, if we call the median M and we integrate up to the median, that will cause, um, that, will, that, that will, should be equal to half because half the area should be to the left. And it's not just about integration. Of course, the mode is the, the most likely outcome. So that would be the highest point on the graph. So on a graph like this, that would be the turning point. So we could differentiate our function, set it to zero, and, and solve for, for the value that would give us uh, the turning point, and therefore that's the mode. So there's some fantastic yeah, uh, calculus in here, which really using the pure maths that we learned in year 12. And people like myself, who don't really find the rest of statistics very interesting, would love this chapter. And it would be, this would be pretty much half of year two, right? Like these, these are both not that long to do. This would be like half of the entire year just doing this, just doing calculus. And of course, you can go on to cumulative random variable, uh, continuous variables. You can go on to uh, uniform distributions, uh, cumulative, uh, to continuous uniform distributions, all really good stuff. And it would keep, and I, I think it would, for people, again, like me, it would show them the light at the end of the statistics tunnel, where like, it's not all about distributions and, and typing stuff into the calculator. You can do proper maths in your statistics, and, you know, you'd enter university thinking, oh, okay, well, some statistics I don't really like very much, but actually the stuff that's just calculus, that's great. I could I could, I could, could follow that route and do some more of that. Um, and that's, as we said, one of the core aims of the starts that I, that I laid out. So this is the entire spec. That's, that's the whole thing. This is what I think it should look like roughly. Um, of course, there'll be problems with this because we haven't really taught it through properly. Um, I'm sure there will be problems. People, of course, will be watching thinking, oh, you should have included this, you should have included that. And there are lots of other great things to include. Um, for example, Poisson distribution used to be an S1. So, you know, maybe it should still be in there. Maybe I could have included it. But the problem that we have is, you know, this stats, it's only one sixth of the A level. Whichever example you're, you're, you're with, it's probably, I think it's, I think for all of them, it's, it's a 50 mark test for two years of work. So realistically, you're not looking at more than eight or, you know, seven or eight questions. And here are eight topics. So like, if you wanted to put something else in, you're really going to have to get rid of, get take something out. And and looking at these topics here, I'm pretty happy with them. I don't really want to lose any of them. And so, you know, Poisson distributions uh, or uh, other distributions and so on, you can talk to me about putting them in and I'll listen to them. I think they're all really good ideas. 
But these are the ones that I've settled with. I think this would make for a coherent and useful curriculum for us to do. Um, one thing that I did want to mention that for me was the hardest omission. And and also, you know, I've, I, I've taken this from further stats, haven't I? Um, so maybe there needs to be something else that I need to put in there. By the way, I'm not going to replace this with anything new in further stats, because what I think should happen here is you should do this in regular stats, and then you should just do it more in further stats with harder functions, like the kind of functions that you learn to integrate in core pure books, uh, in the further maths books, uh, in much the same way that in like the further pure um, uh, uh, books, you do differential equations, even those though those are in the core, core pure books, because you just do them more. You just do harder ones. You do ones with more exception with with more tricks. Um, and I think the same thing should happen with here. Like this should still be in further statistics. It should just be made more tricky and more hard. Um, but these things, so okay, we need to replace these things. And I think the thing that should replace those um, is is things about like permutations, combinations, and things like that. Because actually, it sounds stupid, and I've never really thought about it. But for example, if you have n things. And you want to arrange those n things in a line, and you want to know how many ways there are to do that. That's n factorial, but that's never made explicit anywhere in A level maths. It's it's in um, further pure, the further pure stuff that nobody ever takes. Finally, starts talking about it. But I think this would be a really nice opportunity to do it in our stats course because I think it kind of is stats. Here's here's a here's a step question. That I think it's probably a bit harder than, than what I'd expect or what I'd like to be put in, in A-level, obviously, as a step question. But I, I think this is the kind of thing that we should put in, in our first stats. And actually, I, I was really trying to find space for it in regular stats as well, but I, I couldn't quite do it. Um, but like for this question here, okay, so you've got N pupils, R play hockey. So I'm representing like this. We've got N pupils. I've made the hockey ones red, of course. I don't know there are four of them, but this is just what it roughly looks like. Um, what's the probability that if you line them up in a row, uh, there's a hockey player at the start and the end. Well, to do that, you just take a hockey player and stick them at the front. There are R ways of doing that because there's R hockey players. And then you take one of the remaining R minus one hockey players because you already used one of them and put them at the end. So R times R minus one. And now you have N minus two people. And you just need to arrange those N minus two people in the middle, which is N minus two factorial. And, uh, and of course, it's a probability. So then you divide by the total number of ways of arranging them without any restrictions, which is n factorial. And I just think this is a really nice sort of thing that we should be doing somewhere in an exam that people actually take, because no one takes further pure, let's be honest. Um, because this kind of thing is all over first year university maths courses. And so this is the thing that I really wanted to include and couldn't quite. So instead, I'm just going to put it in further stats in, in, instead and, uh, and put it there. Anyway, I think that's everything I had to say. So um, thanks for watching. I have a petition. Um, in the description, which you can sign, and uh, and we can together we can fix this this stats problem. Uh, but anyway, thanks for thanks for watching, and I'll I'll see you next time.